What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas. And today I'm gonna just be going over a couple trades I made this week. Um, I know previously my other videos were just kind of teaching videos. I'm probably gonna keep doing a few more like as I see stuff come up. But for right now, I've kind of, you know, hit a brick wall on those. And that was kind of my goal. I wanted to uh, showcase some of my strategies, showcase some of my ideas, showcase my kind of approach to trading in the market so that when people ask me questions I can say hey check out this video that I made on for instance when I stop going long or when people ask me about my morning process instead of just having like a five minute conversation with them and trying to get them to understand I can show them my actual video and how I use my process every morning just if we use that kind of as an example and um, it just really kind of gives people an in-depth look of what I do so these the next couple videos are probably just gonna be trade recaps throughout the week I mean as always if things come up and people ask me for a bounce video or people ask me for stuff like that I'll I'll keep continuing to make those types of teaching videos as well so it really just depends what kind of happens on the week so I guess my idea for this video was I'm just gonna go over you know some trades from this week stuff that kind of stood out to me and also maybe just kind of talk about a couple questions I got through the week and just stuff like that. Uh, first of all, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't uh, financial advice, even if it seems like it, all for educational and entertainment purposes. So uh, let's get into this video. Yeah, okay, so this one was uh, on Monday. I, it was APDN, um, number one hot chick of the day. Everyone knew about it. Everyone was talking about it. It was running pre-market. It was a COVID stock, overextended pre-market by a long shot. It got lots of volume. And I guess my plan on it was that at the open, I just wanted the stock to show me where it wanted to go. And then I was just going to kind of tweak my plan and adapt kind of accordingly. In the room, I said that I wanted the 1020 line. It ended up getting there and bouncing for like pretty much a dollar move. And I don't really call things or, you know, I, I try not to do that type of stuff. It's more just to show people what I'm thinking. And um, maybe you disagree and you say, Harry, I, I think it's going to go a line lower. I mean, totally fine with me. I just more so do it for the kind of educational purposes so people can kind of see what I'm thinking but anyway it reminded me of past tickers and I'm going to include a past ticker that it reminded me of just to kind of show you that I, I'm not necessarily a quote patterns trader but I like to compare uh, the same types of patterns and the same types of price actions and um, by studying and watching the tape and reviewing charts and going over past tickers I can kind of show you what I mean by uh, how I compared APDN to another stock that I remembered in uh, August, I'm pretty sure it was. So basically, yeah, you know, heavy tape at the open, um, again, low float, and I just kind of like the idea of buying dips if we could get a type of play like that, and that's exactly what we got. I'm just gonna go over some share statistics as well, so you guys don't need to really kind of back test. I don't really go over the average volume for the three month or the average volume for the 10 day, because we know that these big gap up days are obviously gonna be doing uh, exceptional volume, more volume than the ticker usually does in probably, you know, a year or something like that. So it's, it, I don't really pay attention to this stuff. Shares outstanding, I mean, yeah, if we're looking, I, I always use this kind of Yahoo Finance and this kind of FinVid stuff, just as more of a benefit benchmark I don't need to know that the sh the float is exactly you know let's say here it's wrong and the float is like you know somewhere along the lines of like 2.9 or maybe it's they've issued more shares or so I just need to know that it's in the kind of ballpark so I don't really calculate the shares and the float and 
everything like that down to the, the millisecond, it's really not my deal, but I just need to know what kind of ballpark it in, it's in just so I can kind of ballpark it and just say, okay, this is, you know, a lower float or this is, uh, you know, if this was 50 mil, I might have a different idea on it or I might, I might be having, you know, I might be thinking about something different on the play. So, uh, yeah, I basically, I don't really, I, it's not that I don't care. I just want to know uh, more so, you know, what is the kind of, you know, ballpark it's in. Uh, so yeah, I guess we had, you know, 16% held by insiders, you know, around 20% held by institutions. So that's okay. And basically, yeah, you can, I mean, you can go through the short flow. I don't really go through it. I just wanted to include the whole thing in case someone wanted to do any back testing on it or something like that. Um, and yeah, obviously lower market cap. So those were ideas I had going in. I just wanted to be familiar with the market cap, the float, everything going in just to know what kind of ballpark I was playing for. And uh, just so I can kind of tweak and adjust and just just so I can get a good understanding of the ticker based on these kind of you know, like, you know, share statistics. Uh, so these were the trades that I made on it. I mean, nothing really special, guys. I basically kind of bought this like VWAP dip on the support around here, ended up working. And I was just kind of just looking to kind of sell pops. And again, we got this kind of dip down here. And I just, I just kind of, I placed an order because I had a feeling that we get probably one more bounce to VWAP and that's what we got. And I mean, that was pretty much it for this ticker. Um, pre-market, the reason why I avoided pre-market, I know I'm going to have a lot of people saying, oh, Harry, why didn't you, why didn't you hit this pre-market? And the reason why, guys, was because it was Monday. As you can see down here, Monday, I don't like to screw things up early on Monday. It's Monday and Friday that I, I had, there's really three days for me that I'm always very cautious. One day is Monday. The reason why I'm cautious on Monday is because, you know, I want to I want to be setting a good example for myself for the week. I want to be having a great process for the week. I want to be green on the day. I want to and even if I'm small red, that's OK, too. But I just want to be setting a good example for myself for the week. And then we have Friday. That's another day where I definitely take my foot off the gas pedal because usually I'm up a decent amount throughout the week. So uh, on on days like Friday, I, uh, you know, I just I just say to myself, OK, you know, it happened to be a slow Friday today, but I'm just kind of, you know, putting putting my foot off the gas pedal and saying to myself, okay, you know, again, same type of scenario as Monday. And then Thursday for me also is another one where I don't know why, I'm not really sure, but Thursday is a day I just completely always underperform. I didn't underperform this Thursday, but the two Thursdays before that, I lost 27K on one and I lost uh, 6K on another, so... Obviously, there's something up with Thursday. I really think it's just because I'm kind of tired throughout the week or I get a little bit too cocky and I don't want to cut losses. I'm not really sure. But this Thursday, I made sure that I was in check and thankfully came out green. So, I mean, that's all we can hope for. So anyway, basically with this APDN trade, I just kind of, the reason why I wanted to buy dips on it and I wasn't expecting a rip to 14 or 15 was just because it. I found it had already kind of topped out around 13. And it was more so of a backside trade, which is completely fine with me. I mean, I don't need stocks to go to the moon every day. I just need consistent singles. And I mean, that's exactly what we got here. You know, it's a, it's a really great one and a, and a nice treat. And, you know, these backside bounces, I love them because it's just kind of just buy the dip, sell the rip, you know, and I'm just letting the stock move. And I'm just kind of, you know, doing things with my lines. I mean, I'm sure people are going to back test later. I mean, I just was basically saying, OK, we knew this kind of 1120 area was previous support from before. And that was when I just, you know, kind of said to myself, OK, just going to just going to kind of take some. Also, it kind of lined up with VWAP as well. So you have those two types of buyers, the VWAP buyers, the support buyers. You probably have some, uh, uh, you know, people and then everyone who was trapped. My th I guess my thesis on it was that everyone who was trapped from this 13 area was probably looking to sell. And then when they saw it kind of they were they were probably hoping that it got back to 13 or maybe even went up to 14. But I there were a lot of people who were kind of starting to buy up in this type of range and then once they were underwater it, people are just going to panic and they're they're you know it's just like me you know when i don't friggin when i don't cut a loss i'm like oh please bounce please bounce just let me limit this loss and that's the time where you just need to if you're if you're ever trapped and your your risk level breaches you just got to get out that's the most important part and uh thankfully with uh, apdn we didn't really get in that situation and it was just some backside bounces just two trades on it and then i just kind of let it run in this type of direction because you know the first bounce is okay the second bounce you know you're usually getting a little bit of a bounce maybe had of this got above let's say 12 i might have looked to to buy again on this line here but just couldn't get there and that's completely okay and that's just trading guys like you just gotta have if it goes here 
then I'm going to do this, or if it does this, then I'm going to avoid. And that's kind of the way I make my plans on the kind of if then statement. So uh, yeah. And then I also wanted to say that it reminded me of this ticker. Obviously, this was July 17th. A buddy of mine recorded this for me, which was super nice. And I, it, it reminded me exactly of this ticker where we kind of get this this nice kind of opening range type type scenario. And this was Fran, same type of same type of deal where just a lower float and just a little bit too overextended in the pre-market needed to pull back and um that's exactly you know i i just kind of i have a really photographic memory and exactly when i saw apdn lining up i was like okay we're gonna go through the backside bounces that's how it's going to be and my plan ended up working out super well but this is an example where you can where you can review old tickers, where you can watch the tape on old tickers, record your screen, understand how these type of low float stocks move, and then you can kind of use that to your advantage. Because had have I not put in the work and had have I not reviewed this chart, maybe I would have maybe I would have screwed up and said, "Oh, I want this to go above 1250 or 13 and I would have been totally disoriented, right? So it's always good that we always, always, always are are reviewing and looking at old charts and looking at old trades that we made and always kind of studying. And that's kind of my motto. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just going to keep doing that and keep remembering. But it's uh, it's always good to, to always remember this type of stuff. So thanks guys for watching. DM me anytime. I'm, I'm literally always available at MIC. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So I hope everyone has a great day and you guys can catch me next time. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you wanna see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.